Okay, so let's do 12.4. It says, let C be a smooth curve represented by R of T. Then we define capital T to equal R prime divided by magnitude of R prime when R prime is not zero. And we call this capital T the unit uh, tangent vector. Okay, so let's take a look at an example now. So example, find the unit tangent vector to the curve given by uh, r equal to t squared i plus 2tj ln of tk uh, when t is 1. Okay, so let's go through. So we have to find the derivative first. So let's do that. So the derivative of uh, t squared, which would be 2t, derivative of 2t, which would be just 2, and derivative of ln of t, which would be 1 over t. Let me write that down here. Okay, so r prime by distance. So again, derivative of t squared would be 2t, derivative of 2t would be 2, derivative of ln would be 1 over t. Okay, and now let's find the magnitude of our r prime. So let's do that. Okay, so the magnitude of r prime would be the uh, the x component, so the i component squared, so it'd be 2t squared plus the j component squared, 2 squared, plus the k component squared, 1 over t squared. Now, 1 over t you can write as uh, t to the minus 1, so then this will simplify to t to the minus 2 here, so let me write it down here. So I get this, because squaring out will be 4t squared, squaring 2 will be 4, and again, 1 over t you can uh, write as t to the minus 1, then 2 times minus 1 would be t to the minus 2. Okay, now let's write our uh, tangent vector, or capital T. Let me write it right here. Okay, so we get then that uh, our unit tangent vector will be r prime over magnitude of r prime. So you can think of that as 1 over the magnitude of r prime times r prime. So it'll be this then. So we need to evaluate this now when uh, t is 1. So let me stick in 1 in place of t everywhere. Okay, so plugging 1 in place of t everywhere, so putting 1 here would be 4 times 1 squared, uh, 1 here, be negative one, uh, 1 to the minus 2 power, putting 1 here and here. So this then becomes uh, 1 over square root of 9 here, and then 2i plus 2j plus k, let me write that here. Okay, so we got 1 over square root of 9, 2i plus 2j plus k, square root of 9 is 3, so it's 1 third times 2i plus 2j plus k. So that's our answer. Okay, so we're done with this example. Uh, let's move on to our next topic. So I'm gonna erase uh, some stuff here now and move on. Okay, so let's look at theorem seven. It says our capital T, our unit uh, tangent vector dotted with the unit tangent vector derivative is zero. So let's look at the proof of this, okay? So let's look at the proof. Okay, so first note that if I go, uh, our, our unit tangent vector dotted with itself, what's well, gonna be the magnitude? Well, in general, if you just dot uh, the vector with itself, it's the magnitude of the vector squared. But in this case, the magnitude's one because by definition, uh, the way it's defined the, just by, uh, the way it's defined, the, it is, it's a unit vector, so it's magnitude's one. So therefore, capital T dotted with itself will be one. Okay, so let's, uh, now let's take the derivative on both sides here and here with respect to t. So we want to take derivative on both sides. This means with respect to t. So we're going to have to use a product rule on this side. And derivative 1 here would be 0. So let me write it down here. Okay, so applying product rule is going to be derivative of the first function. So it be a capital T prime t uh, dotted with itself, uh, well, dotted with uh, T uh, capital T plus capital T dotted with capital T prime. So it's a product rule and derivative on this side, derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, so then we can conclude the following. Okay, well this first term and second term are the same, so I can write it as two capital T dotted with capital T prime. I can divide both sides by 2 and I'll get our claim up here. So dividing both sides by 2. So dividing both sides by 2, we get our claim, so we're done with the proof. 
Okay, so let's uh, move on now. Okay, so next thing, let's see be a smooth curve represented by R of t, then capital N defined to be capital T prime over magnitude of T prime, uh, provided the magnitude of T prime is in zero, we call capital N the principal unit normal vector. Okay, so let's look at a corollary now to theorem seven. Okay, so our corollary states that the unit tangent vector capital T dotted with the principal unit normal vector is zero. What I mean by corollary is it's going to follow from theorem seven up here. So theorem seven is this guy up here. So let's see how it follows. So let me write the proof down here. Okay, so proof note, uh, so our unit uh, normal vector dot with our, uh, sorry, unit uh, tangent vector dot with our normal vector is defined to be this, because our capital N is defined up here. Okay, now we can write this as, So I pull the magnitude of capital T prime out here. Uh, and this part here is zero from, look up here from theorem seven, it's zero. So going back down here, that's theorem seven right there. Uh, that's that's gonna be zero, so we write that. Okay, so it's zero by theorem seven, that's gonna make the whole thing zero. So we're done. So you see it just follows from theorem seven, that's why it's a corollary. Corollary means uh, something that follows from a theorem. Okay, so now let's look at an example. I'm gonna erase some things here now. Let's look at an example. Okay, so example, this is from practice quiz three, it's number one. So for r of t equal to t squared i, two t j, ln of t k, find it. Uh, capital T1 and capital N1, then verify the capital T1 dot with capital N1 equals zero. Okay, so we ha we've actually done part of this already. So in the first example, we found uh, T1 was the same uh, R function. So let's write uh, what we found in the first example. Okay, so from the previous example, the first example we did in this section, we found that uh, capital T1 or the unit uh, ta tangent vector is equal to one third 2i plus 2j plus k and capital T uh, was equal to four t squared plus four plus t to the minus two. It was one over the square root, but you can write that as to the minus one half power. Then it was two ti plus two j plus t to the minus one k. Okay, so now let's start to find our Capital, capital N or uh, capital N vector. Let's do that. So recall our principal unit normal vector, our capital N is defined to be capital T prime over magnitude of uh, capital T prime. So uh, let's start doing that. So we're gonna have to find the derivative of this guy here, which is gonna be kind of messy, but let's uh, start doing it. So I can make a substitution. I'm going to call f of t this whole guy here. Okay, then I can rewrite my capital T using this f. Okay, now I'll multiply the f in, so it'll be f times 2t, so it'll be 2t f, f times 2, 2 times f of t, and f times t to the minus 1, so it'll be t to the minus 1 times f. Now let's find t prime. We're going to take derivative of each of the components. I'm going to have to use a product rule on that and that one. So let's uh, do it here. Okay, so I did the derivative, I did the i component, so I'm gonna have to use a product rule on this. I'm gonna think of this as the first function, the 2t, and f of t is the second function, so it's gonna be derivative of first function, which is two, so we've got two here, times second, f, plus first, 2t, times derivative of second, f prime of t. So that's a product rule on the i component. Now we'll do, we'll move on to the j component. That's not, re, that's not gonna require a product rule, so it's gonna be two f prime of t j direction. This guy will require a product rule, so it's gonna be derivative of first times second plus first times derivative of second. Let me write that here. 
ok so applying product rule on this last guy derivative of t to the minus one bring the minus one in front subtract one to be minus t to the minus two times my second function plus first function t to the minus one times derivative of my f k direction so product rule there also now let's find uh, f prime now So here's my f up here. So to take the derivative, you first take the minus 1 half in front, like I have here. Then we subtract 1 from the power, like I've done here. Uh, and then multiply by derivative of the inside. So we're using the chain rule here. So derivative of the inside would be derivative of 4t squared would be 8, 8t. Derivative of 4 would be 0. And derivative of t to the minus 2, bring the minus 2 in front, subtract 1. OK, so my, minus 1 half uh, minus 1 can write that as minus 2 over 2. This is going to be minus 3 halves right here, so let me change that. Okay, so I've changed this to minus 3 halves here. Now, we're looking for uh, the capital N, or the principal unit normal vector, when uh, t is 1. So we're going to have to uh, evaluate uh, up here uh, when t is 1. So we're going to have to find uh, f prime of 1 and f of 1 and stuff like that. So let's uh, let's evaluate our f prime now at one. So plugging one in place of t up here, we'll, we'll get this. And simplifying this, for example, in there it looks like it's nine. And in here it looks like it's going to be uh, six. So let me write it, write it out here. So we get this then. Uh, and then we can uh, break this down. For example, 9 to the minus 3 halves would mean uh, 1 over the square root of 9 cubed. So let me write that. Okay, so 2 into 6 goes 3, so it would be minus 3 in front here. Then the 9 to the minus 3 halves is 1 over square root of 9 cubed. Square root of 9 is 3. So let me uh, simplify that here. So some of the volume get minus 3 over 3 cubed, uh, cross the 3 up, be minus 1 over 3 squared should be negative 1 ninth. So our f prime of 1 is negative 1 ninth. Okay, now let's find uh, f, some f's up here, let's find f of 1 now. So let's do that. Actually, before doing that, uh, so my f prime of 1 is negative 1 ninth, as you said. I just moved it up here. I'm going to write some stuff here now. Okay. Okay, so now let's do f of 1. So again, my f's up here. It's the 4t squared plus 4 plus t to the minus 2 raised to the minus 1 half. So putting 1 in place of t, we get this. And it looks like it's going to be 9 there. So it's going to be 9 to the minus 1 half, which means 1 over square root of 9. which should be one-third. Okay, now we can start uh, evaluating our t prime at one now. So actually, I might write my f of one equals one-third up here. Okay, so I've written my f of one equals one-third up here. And I'm going to erase this here, and we can start evaluating uh, capital T prime at 1. So let's do that. Okay, so we're putting 1 in place of T, so it's going to be 2 times F of 1. F of 1 is 1 third, so it'll be 2 times a third, plus 2 times 1, times F prime of 1. F prime of 1 is negative 1 ninth. I direction plus 2 times F prime of 1, negative 1 ninth, J. That's going to be uh, negative, and then minus 1 to the minus 2 power, f of 1, 1 third, plus 1 to the minus 1 uh, times negative 1 ninth. So simplifying this, we get, so we get this then. Then we'll get a common denominator here, which would be 9, so I multiply top and bottom by 3 here, would be 6. So it would be 6 minus 2 would be 4, and uh, 9's there, and same thing here. So working that out, you'll, uh, you should get this. So you should end up with this, so 4 9 psi minus 2 9 j minus 4 9 k. I'm going to pull uh, a, a 2 9 out of everything here. 
somewhere right over here. So we'll get this then. Okay, pulling two nines out because two nines times two would be four nines i, two nines times minus minus one would be minus two nines j, and two nines times two would be minus four nines k. Now let's find the magnitude of our capital T prime of one. So the uh, magnitude of capital T prime of one will be a magnitude of this guy up here. The two nines will come outside of the magnitude, and that'll just be the uh, two squared minus one squared plus minus two squared. And that's gonna be four, four, nine. So it's gonna be squared of nine here. Okay, so we get this, and it's gonna end up being uh, two thirds now. Now we can find our principal unit normal vector, or our uh, capital N of one now. So let's put one in place of uh, T up here. So our capital N of one then, will be t prime of one over magnitude of capital T prime of one. So our capital T prime of one, we found uh, right here. So I put it on top. And then our magnitude guy, we found was two thirds. So it's down here. So I can do reciprocal of that then. So it's uh, right, right over here. So during reciprocal, we had uh, three halves times two nines times the vector guy here. So it's gonna go get three there, and I'll cancel. So we're left with one third in front then. So I have one third in front, so it's gonna be our capital N, so our principal uh, unit normal vector at one will be this guy here. So now we need to show that the dot product of these guys is zero, this part here. So let's summarize what we have. So let me write some things and summarize what we have. So summarizing, we have our uh, capital T1 is this guy, capital N1 is this guy. So we need to show that the dot product of the two is zero now, and then we're done. So let's show that. So dotting, we got one third times one third, so one ninth, two times two here, two times minus one here, one times minus two here, it's gonna be four minus two minus two, so it's gonna be zero, our result. So it checks out. Okay, so we're done with this example. So I'm gonna leave the video here, I'm gonna pick up uh, in par uh, part two of this video. We're not quite done with the section yet, we got one more thing to cover. So I'll pick it up in part two, so let's leave it there.